We have just seen Prophet Java and now Prophet Makandiwa enter into the political sphere. Should Christians be involved in politics? Gobo. We're going to answer that question in this video. Should Christians be involved in politics? The simple answer is yes. Because God gave us as humans, and especially as Christians, the dominion mandate, which is to rule over God's creation, but not to rule over people. However, with the fall came the desire to rule over one another. We rejected God as king and wanted to rule by ourselves. That's why in the book of Samuel, when God's people ask for a king, God says to Samuel, that they have not rejected him as prophet, but have rejected God as king over their lives. The problem is mankind has always wanted to be ruled by another man, and that's where politics came from. So in light of this, how are Christians meant to view politics? Firstly, politics affects the way that you live your life. Policies are made, and these affect your life and the life of people around you. So you need to be involved in that. So as a Christian, you firstly need to exercise your right to vote. People misunderstand the verse that talks about people being subject to their rulers. But if you live in a democracy, and most of us do, then you're able to choose the person you're subject to. It's like marriage. The Bible is clear on the issue of submission. But what people fail to realize is that a lady is free to choose whom to submit to. And like in politics, we have the right to choose the person whom we'll submit to. We can't complain after the fact when we have chosen sound ourselves. God is sovereign. He allowed us to use governance for the betterment of our lives in general. And as Christians, we need to remember most of all that no matter who is in power, it has no bearing on the kingdom of God. God is still on the throne and God is in control. And this leads to another question. What Christians are not meant to do with politics? Firstly, they're not meant to look at politics as their savior. As discussed before, God is sovereign and we can't expect any man on this earth to fix our problems because we're all fallen beings and imperfect beings make imperfect decisions. God is the one that we should be looking to as our salvation, both personally and as a nation. Secondly, and this relates mostly to Makandiwa, that we cannot use God's people to garner votes. His lecture to his church and congregation about political issues in the country really was misplaced because the pulpit is a sacred place. It's a place of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we cannot use the pulpit that God gives us to preach politically motivated messages. This is the bride of Christ and we should be in awe when addressing God's people. Partisan politics has no role in the pulpit. We cannot be seen to be promoting one party over another. <laughs> if you're getting any value from this video, hit the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Christians should not sell out when it comes to politics. We need to remember, is the kingdom of God first, then the kingdom of man? And I get concerned when I see the likes of Prophet Java that claim to be ministers of the gospel, proclaiming more the mantra of the party they belong to more than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because the party cannot save, but Jesus Christ can save. And that is a more important message. So Christians, don't sell out. Especially if you find yourself within the system, then you are there for a reason. And this leads us to the next question. What political party can Christians even join? The answer is all of them. However, if the core tenets of that political party go against God and his revealed word in the Bible, then we need to stay away. As an obvious example, if someone was to form the National Adultery Party, then we'd know that is something to stay away from. Because the word says, what part can light play with darkness? And there are levels of darkness that a Christian should not be involved with at all. While Christians have the freedom to belong to any political party that they choose to, some might be called to go deeper and actually work for political parties or serve within governments. And I believe some of these people are actually sent on assignment by God. What is this assignment you might ask? To be the salt and light. So whether you're in ZANU PF or you're in Triple C, or if you're in the States, you're a Democrat or Republican, God is calling you to be the salt and light in that place, to bring influence so that there may be righteous rule and governance in our nations. As a Christian in politics, you are God's ambassador for righteousness. While I don't agree with what Prophet Makandiwa and Prophet Java have done in their entering of politics, 
it's still critical for Christians to be involved in politics the right way. Remember that ultimate rule comes from Jesus. So even if you're a ruler, a modern day king, remember that Jesus is king above you. He is the king of kings and you'll be called to give an account to him directly. Politics can't save us. Only Jesus Christ can do that. But while we're on earth, we have the dominion mandate to bring creation under the rulership and lordship of Jesus Christ. That is the politics that is pleasing to God. Click or tap the screen below to watch this next video that I think will bless you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.